everything you need. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his wonders among all peoples. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is also to be feared above all gods. Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus, we're grateful for the opportunity for the privilege to come into your presence. Father, we're thankful that we might today worship you in spirit as well as in truth. Father, we're asking right now for a special anointing of your Holy Spirit to fall afresh upon us today. Father, we can't depend on what happened last week, what happened last month, Lord, but we're asking for a fresh a fresh anointing today. Father, we pray that you would have your way in this place, Lord. We pray that you would speak to the hearts of your children today as we worship you here and as your children worship you online. Father, may our worship, may our praise be acceptable in your sight. Oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. In Christ's name we pray, amen. today comes from James 1 verse 21 through 25. Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness and implanted word which is able to save our souls. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks like, who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, this one will be blessed in what he does. Amen. 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 It's, it's, it's just something about hearing a child read the word of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It is time for us to get into the posture and the position of prayer. Come before our maker. You know, the beauty is that he already knows what's going on. 
He already knows what's on our hearts and what's troubling us. But he wants us to spend some time and connect with him and talk to him about it. Amen? Amen. And that's what we're going to do right now. Go on our knees so that we can seek some understanding and pray for wisdom so that we can see things more clearly. Falling. Falling on my knees. I viewing online typically at this time we are watching the service and and we're sitting on a couch or we're uh, sitting on the bed or, or we're sitting in a chair and, and 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 we sit and we just watch the service and so I'm going to ask you to do something different today because the song says that some things I can't see until I bow so I'm going to ask you to get up out of your bed, to get up out of your seat, to get out of your chair, to get off of your couch, and to bow before the Lord. Bow before the Lord. Bow before the Lord. Our Father and our God, our Creator, our King, our Redeemer, our rose of Sharon, our bright and morning star, our lily of the valley, our salvation, our comforter, our soon coming king. Father, we bow this morning just thanking you for your goodness. Thank you, mercy. Thank you for your grace. We don't know where we would be without you. Father, we come this morning boldly before your throne, hungry, thirsting for Jesus Christ. Father, we're tired. We're worn. We're beaten. We're battered. We're bruised. Father, there are some of us watching today, Lord, watching this service this morning, Lord. 
Father, not only have we experienced the mountains, Lord, but right now we are in the midst of the valley. And Father, there are many of us who are watching, Lord, and, and we've experienced one thing after another, Lord. And it seems like every time we, we get out of the valley, every time it seems like we're getting to the mountaintop, something else happens. Father, it seems like, 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 like for some reason or another, we are the ones who, who are always in the midst of suffering and trial and tribulation. And Father, there are some of us who, who are watching right now. And Lord, we've been in the midst of this pandemic for a year, Lord. And, and we've gone through one thing after another. And we're on the verge of letting go. We're on the verge of giving up. We're on the verge of throwing in the towel. And so, Father, I'm asking right now in the name of Jesus that you would speak to that heart right now. That you would speak to that individual right now. That you would speak to that situation right now. And Father, we're asking right now in the name of Jesus that you would manifest yourself. That you would show forth your glory. which That you would allow them to see that you are still high and lifted up. That you still sit high and look low. That you still hear the prayers and the petitions of your people. Lord, we're asking right now in the name of Jesus that you would manifest your glory in this place today. In somebody house, somebody's house today in somebody's life today, Lord. We pray that you would do something miraculous in their life today in the name of Jesus. Father, somebody right now needs healing in the name of Jesus. Right now, somebody needs deliverance right now in the name of Jesus. Right now, somebody needs a financial breakthrough right now in the name of Jesus. And we're asking right now that you would do something for them. Do something for them. Do something for them, Lord. We know that you've done it in the past. You say that you are the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And so right now, we claim victory. Right now, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We bow before you right now, Lord God. We have seen you do what you but We have seen you do something for us in the past, Lord. We've seen you do it for everybody else around us, Lord. And we know, we believe. That because you are no respecter of persons, Lord, you can do it for us. Not tomorrow, not next week, not next month, but we need healing, deliverance, victory right now, immediately, Lord. Immediately, somebody right now is ready to give up, Lord. And so we're asking that you would do something for them that they cannot, that they cannot do for themselves. be grateful to give you all the praise and all the glory all the honor that you are deserving of Father we're tired we're tired we're tired of going through this mess this stuff this earth called sin Father we need you to come back we need you to come back Father, until you come, we pray that you would keep your people because we cannot keep ourselves. We thank you for what you've done. We thank you for what you're doing. And Father, we are in expectation and we thank you for what you're going to do because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
worship. Hallelujah. 
oh God. We just need to feel your glory. Not us. It's all about you. Radiate on us, Lord, your character. Let us feel your presence in our lives, in our hearts. Amen. We want your glory to far outshine everything else. So you get all the honor.
Now the Bible declares that let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. So the only excuse that you have to not praise Him is if you're dead. But I dare you to just open up your hand and go, go like this, go like this. Just check that pulse just to make sure that you're still breathing. Just to make sure that He woke you up and, and breathed breath into your body this morning. And I'm just, I'm just going to challenge you this morning that if you can do this and if you feel a heartbeat, then you have no excuse but right, to give Him right, glory. Right. So that's why we sing, yeah. we glorify, yeah. we glorify Your name. Come on and bless the Lord. Magnify Your name. Christian sing along. We're not here to just pump you up. We're here to give God glory. We're here to magnify He that is worthy. Come on and worship Him. Praise Him till you feel like worshiping. Come on, if worship was dependent upon how you felt, you would never lift your hands. But I dare somebody with bold faith to say, in spite of how I feel this morning, I choose to worship. Yes. In spite of how I feel, I choose to give Him glory. Yes. Hallelujah, Jesus, you're worthy. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes. yes, we give you glory. We choose to give you glory this morning. Because you're the center of all of it. You're the center of our joy. You're the center of our lives. Yes. Come on, bring us back to that place where it's all about you, God. Where it's all about you, Lord. Where you're the center of it all. Hallelujah. Oh, we give you the glory, Jesus. Thank you. 
Jesus at the center of it all. 
nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. Jesus is at the center. I wonder if he's at the center of your life. Have you made Jesus the center? You know, sometimes we we get so busy with just life in general. And so instead of Jesus being the center, the, the center becomes my children. Or the center becomes my job. The center becomes my spouse. The center becomes my car. It becomes everything else. The center becomes everything else but Jesus. And I just believe that right now Jesus is trying to get us back to making him the center of our lives. Where we wake up in the morning and the first thing we think about is Jesus. When we go throughout the day and all we think about is, is, is when can I get more time to spend with Jesus? I think he's trying to get us back to that time where we're where when we go to bed at night, the last thing that we think about is Jesus. The last thing that we, we, we spend time with is Jesus. It's not, the, the, it's not Facebook. It's, it's not the television. It's, it's, it's not all of these other things, but it's just Jesus. I think he wants us to get back to him being the center. And I really think that, that, that we have just gotten distracted with everything else. We've begun to focus on everything else. And, and, and the reality is for, for, for many of us, it's not something that, 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 that we intentionally did. But life just life just comes comes upon us and 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 we begin to just just start to you know and so i i'm 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 spending an hour with jesus and and all of a sudden this thing comes up and and so that time that hour with jesus becomes a half an hour and so something else comes up and and, and so i got to take care of that something else and and so i haven't spent that hour with jesus in in a while and so that that hour that that hour becomes a half an hour. Then that half an hour becomes 15 minutes. And, and then because I had to get up early for work this morning. So what happens is I, I, I missed that time with Jesus yesterday. Or I missed that time with Jesus this morning. And so what happens is, what happens is that that, that, that one day becomes two. And that two day becomes three. And, 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 and we go a whole week and we haven't spent any time with Jesus. And Jesus is just longing for us to make him the center of our lives. And the thing is, Jesus, see, see, he's not selfish. He's not saying, I want you, I, I, I want you to spend all day, every day with me. Even when we think about, when we just think about something as simple as the tithe, he said, look, I just want 10. You can have the 90. And, and so I believe that, that Jesus is saying the same thing. Look, look, look. I'm not saying, I don't, I, listen, even though because I've woken, I, I, I woke you up this morning, I need to get all 100. I'm, I'm, I understand. I understand. I'm an understanding God. And so because I'm an understanding God, I, I, I know you got to go to work. 
I know you got to take care of the kids. I know you got to do all of these other things. But, but what I'm saying right now, I just need a little bit more time with you. And, and the thing is, it's not because I'm selfish. It's not because I want to take you away from those things. Some things I do. But, but, but it's not because of that. It's just because I love you so much that I just want to be able to spend some quality time with you. And so we got to get to that point. We got to get to that point where, 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 you know, I'm, 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 I'm married. And so my wife, my, my, my wife, my wife, her, her love language, her love language is, is, is quality time. And so my wife is like, I mean, I, I just want to spend some time with you. I don't have to have every day, all day, but, but I just want to have some time. And so I think Jesus is saying the same thing. I want to have some time with you. I need you to forget about everything else. And sometimes I need you to just spend some time with me. I need you to spend some time with me. I need you to spend some time with me. It's been an interesting week. Because... This Sabbath, I was supposed to preach a certain sermon. And the Lord worked it out so I was not supposed to preach that sermon. Let me put it like that. Okay. And so the sermon I was going to preach today, um, you know, that I planned on last week, I'm not preaching today. And, and so I, I sent a, a, a text to our uh, media group. A media team and I told them okay this is the sermon for uh, today and I don't know but I, I just I just I'm just I'm just I'm just feeling today like like the Lord wants me to go in a different direction and so I'm going to preach a sermon this morning that I've preached before preached it a while ago, but I just, I don't know, I'm, I'm just feeling like today, I'm feeling like today, today, somebody watching, somebody watching, maybe you've heard this sermon before, maybe you have not, but I just feel like today somebody needs to go back, somebody needs to go back, somebody has forgotten where they came from. So we're going to go back. Let's pray. Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus, speak to our hearts today. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. I don't know if any of you are watching. Remember your first love. It may have been in elementary school, may have been in middle school or high school, but back in the day, it was that, that one boy or girl that, that, that when you saw them, you just thought they were everything. And so what happens is when you'd go to class, you would, you would always try to sit next to this boy or, or sit next to this girl, hoping that, that somehow, some way that they would notice you. And, and, and what you do is you, you'd have this, this notebook and, and you'd have a full of, uh, full of paper, but, but you'd act like you just ran out. Uh, so you have some reason, some reason to ask him or her for something. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Or, or maybe you were the shy type, so, so you never really had the nerve to actually start up a conversation with, with this brother or this, this sister. So, so you'd ask your best friend to find out what this individual thought of you. And, uh, but then maybe you, you finally got, 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 got up the nerve to actually say something to this individual uh, or to actually say something. And so, 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 so you'd write a, a, a little note. 
Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. You write a little note on a piece of paper, and, and you write, and, and, and on that paper you write, will you go with me? Now, see, when, when if, 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 if you're old, then you remember these days because, see, nowadays they don't say, will you go with me? Nowadays you say, will you go with me? Go with you where? But, see, we, we say, will you go with me? Okay, will you go with me? And, and then on, at the bottom of the paper, you have these two little boxes, one for yes, another one for no. And if you were lucky, then, then these, these, these individuals, this individual would actually say yes. And, and, but then a, 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 a couple of months later, the new boy or, or, or the new girl comes into the picture and, and you begin to think that the grass is greener on the other side. And so you end up, you end up, because you think the grass is greener on the other side, you end up breaking up with your first love. You break up with them only to find out that the grass is not, was not greener on the other side. Have mercy. And so now you want your, now you want your first love back because you realize that, that he, you realize that he is the only one that truly made you happy. Beloved, I want to submit to you today that, that, that many of us, many of us, many of us in the midst of this pandemic, many of us have lost our first love. We've walked away and, and we've, we've thought that, that the grass was greener on the other side. And, and we may or may not have gotten to that point where we realize that, that God, that Jesus is the only one. He is he, meaning that first love is the only one that can truly make us happy. And beloved, I'm not talking about some middle school romance. I'm talking about that first love being Jesus the Christ. But I, beloved, I believe some of us, some of us, some of us have traded in our first love. Traded in our first love for someone, for something, something or someone that is incapable of loving us the same way that Jesus does. See, 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 this is the thing. This is the thing. Your husband, your wife can love you. Your children can love you, but can't nobody love you like Jesus? Nobody. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. In, in verse 1. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 1. And what's interesting is that I have not gone over this sermon, Sister Green. So y'all pray for a brother today. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 1 says, To the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not and have found them liars. And you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. Nevertheless, I have this against you. That you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen. Repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place, unless you repent. But this you have, that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Today, we want to talk on the topic, first love, a love letter from God. Now, before we go any further, let me lay down some ground rules that will keep us, that will help us understand 
as we study the book of Revelation. First thing we need to understand is that the word revelation means disclosure or unveiling. And it denotes a disclosure of something that was previously concealed or hidden. And so the book of Revelation is not, as some would say, a closed book. It is, in fact, an unveiling. The next thing we have to understand is that, as verse 1 says, it is the revelation of Jesus the Christ. So it is not the revelation of the beast or the false prophet or the seven plagues. It is not the revelation of the dragon. It is the revelation of Jesus. And so just like the Old Testament testifies about Jesus, the book of Revelation does the same. It testifies about Jesus. In fact, Revelation is the unveiling of the post-Calvary ministry of Jesus Christ on behalf of his people, which means that Revelation picks up where the Gospels left off. If you remember, the Gospels ended with Jesus ascending to heaven and sitting at the right hand of the Father. Revelation, in turn, picks up Christ's ministry after his ascension. So uh, uh, this is not the revelation of the 144,000 or uh, any of the other topics that, that we would typically discuss when we are learning and studying the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation is a revelation of Jesus Christ. It was written by John on the island of Patmos, which was basically an ancient Alcatraz. The Bible says that it was addressed to the seven churches in Asia Minor. These were literal churches that you could travel to in the same order in which they are listed in the book of Revelation because they were located on interconnecting roads in the Roman province of Asia. When John writes to these seven churches, not only was he writing to address the varying conditions of each individual church, but the letters also represent different time periods and, and different conditions of the Christian church from John's day until the end of the world. He had been, John had been instructed to write about what had already taken place, what was currently happening, and what would take place in the future. The letter we will be talking about today is a letter to the church in Ephesus. Ephesus was one of the leading cities in Asia Minor. It was recognized as a strong commercial center that sat at the head of an important east-west highway, so it was always bustling with activity. What added to this is that it was also a center for pagan worship. Artemis, a fertility goddess, also known as Diana, was worshipped at Ephesus, and during this time, her temple was known as one of the seven wonders of the world. Diana, or Artemis, was so popular throughout Asia Minor that people would come by the thousands every year to participate in sacred rites and rituals in her honor. We're told in Acts chapter 19 that when Paul would go there to, 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 to uh, this place, that, that to Ephesus, he would rent a hall in the city and preach to those who would come to attend these pagan festivities. He'd make such an impact that the temple priests noticed a decline in the temple in the number of people attending and started complaining about losing business. And so this is what Ephesus was like. It was a center of heathen influence. And I can imagine this is why John writing this, these words of Jesus begins with commendation and words of encouragement. He says, I know your deeds and I know your toil. And so the first thing we notice is that the church in Ephesus was a working church. It was a church that was out in the community despite the rampant immorality that plagued every corner of the city. The church tried their best to be that one beacon of light. And so, so this church in Ephesus, I can imagine they had engaging Sabbath school classes and they had relevant children's ministries. And I can imagine many of their children were involved in pathfinders and, and adventurers. They were very active in the community. As a matter of fact, I believe that they went out every Sabbath and did community outreach. So this was a church that, that had a reputation of doing consistent ministries for the Lord. Consistent. He goes on to say that, that I know your perseverance. So this was a church that was steadfast in the midst of trial. 
So these were not Christians who were easily stressed or discouraged because because they believed that if they just continue to keep their eyes on the Lord, then everything would be okay. In spite of everything that was going on around them, in spite of the pandemic, in spite of people dying and, and losing their jobs, they continued to keep their eyes on Jesus. They continued to persevere. He says they did not endure evil men and put to the test those who called themselves apostles, but were not. And so when the preacher, when the preacher, when the preacher stood up to preach the word, the Ephesians didn't just listen. But the Ephesians took notes so they can go back and see if the things that were being said were true. I would believe that they knew that in the last days, even the elect could be deceived if it were possible. And so the church in Ephesus, beloved, was a studying church. Studying church. Yet despite the fact that they seem to have, despite the fact that this church in Ephesus seemed to have everything in order, despite the fact that from all appearances, they were doing everything you would expect from a church that was following the Lord. Jesus still says, I have this one thing against you. Despite the fact that you have these engaging programs and despite the fact that you have many people serving in this position and that position, Despite the fact that you're active in, 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 in ministry outside of the church walls, despite the fact that, that, that you may come to church or you may view the service online every week, I, I still have this one thing against you. I still got this one thing against you. You have forgotten why all of this matters. You have lost your first love. You have lost the passion, the meaning behind what you do. You see, the Ephesians were doing everything that you'd expect from a good old-fashioned Seventh-day Adventist. And so they tuned in on Sabbath morning because that's what you're supposed to do. They read their Bibles maybe a couple days a week. They did what you would expect a good Seventh-day Adventist to do, but somewhere along the line, they lost touch with why they were doing the things that they were doing. It had gotten to the point that uh, the church was now just fulfilling a quota. And so they tune in, so they tune in on Sabbath morning. They tune in on Sabbath morning because, because I got to check off the box. I got to check off the box to say that I did my Sabbath thing. Their love for Christ was all but gone. And they were only checking in on Sabbath morning because that was the quote-unquote right thing to do. They lost their purpose. If we're honest with ourselves, many of us watching have done the same thing. For many of us, the only Jesus we get is this hour and a half on Sabbath. For many of us watching, ever since the pandemic, every day has become alike. What do you mean, Pastor? See, when we were in church, when we were in church and you had to, you know, uh, you got up on Sabbath morning and you went to church, See, there was a, a, a difference between Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday. There was a difference between those days and the Sabbath. 
See, but for many of us watching, there is, see, 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 Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, third, all of the days are the same for many of us. See, we've gotten to that point where, where, where we're literally the only Jesus, the only Sabbath we get is from 11.30 to 1. We have lost our first love. I think about how there are Think about how we began this year, last March, almost a year ago, next Sabbath, or the following Sabbath. We began having worship online. And I remember, I remember specifically, we had a certain number of people who would come online onto the Zoom line, and, 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 and we had good, de decent numbers. But one of the things I've learned is that is as the year has gone by, the numbers have slowly dwindled, dwindled, dwindled. And so you begin to wonder what, what has changed between March of 2020 and March of 2021. What has changed? Jesus says in verse 5, remember the height from which you've fallen. In other words, remember how things used to be when you first made me Lord of your life. When you first got baptized. Remember, before the pandemic, remember how things used to be. Hmm. As a matter of fact, maybe we'll go back before the pandemic because for some of us, for some, of us some of us, some of us, even before the pandemic, before the pandemic, see, see, the pandemic just revealed what, what had already been there. Mercy. See, this pandemic right now is, is, is showing many of our true colors. So we, were, we didn't have a foundation in Jesus before the pandemic, and so right now what's happening is that is that 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 unstable foundation is showing. By the way, the sermon we were supposed to talk about today was firm foundations. And so yeah, Jesus says, I understood it was still new. Our relationship, this this new relationship. So I knew it would take time. For, for us to get to know each other. So, so when I told you, Jesus says, when I, that I would supply all of your needs, I knew that, that you didn't believe me at first because we were still in our honeymoon stage. But as we got closer, when, when things were not going as expected, you didn't worry because you knew that, that, that your, your first love had your back. You knew that your first love would always take care of you. When the devil began to tempt you with all of those, those vices from your past, you knew that you could call on me because, because listen, listen, listen. See, 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 when that, when that, when, when that old, that, that old, old man of sin would come calling again. See, you knew that you could call on me and I would, pull you out. I would deliver you. I can imagine Jesus saying, I, I, you know, I miss those days when, when you would call on me. Instead of thinking and believing that, that you can work this thing out on your own. Jesus says, back then, back then, I knew that I was your first love. There was no doubt in my mind. I remember that you uh, used to say that I would always be number one in your life. Remember them days? Remember, what, but remember, remember when I told you that I would never leave you nor forsake you? He says, I remember you used to quote that, that verse you learned in Romans 8 when you had, had, had just come into the church that, that said that you were, you, were, you were convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future nor any powers, nor height nor death nor anything else in creation will be able to separate you from the love that I have for you. Those were the good old days, Jesus said. 
Those are the good old days when, 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 you fir- when, when I first became a part of your life and I didn't have to worry about you having eyes and time for somebody and something else. See, back then I didn't have to worry about your job. Back then I didn't have to worry about your spouse. I didn't have to worry about none of this other stuff that you put in front of me right now. Because I was number one. See, I also remember when you didn't spend all your time trying to attain all that stuff, the things of the world. Because you understood back then, back then you understood that all of that stuff was temporary and that one day, one day, one day your first love would come. And you wasn't going to be able to take none of that stuff with you anyway. Hmm. But tell me, he says, what happened? What happened to not storing up treasures on earth but putting your treasures in heaven? What happened to the days when when you used to wake up every morning and, and, and you'd wonder if this was the day that your first love was coming to get you? I can imagine Jesus saying, do you really, I mean, do you even still believe that anymore? Do you believe that your first love is coming back to get you? He says in verse 6, even though I'm upset uh, that I'm not, I'm no longer your first love anymore, I do appreciate the fact that you hate the works of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. You see, the Nicolaitans considered it a matter of, of, of indifference to practice adultery and to eat things sacrificed to idols. And they encouraged immoral living because they felt like believing in Jesus released them from having to keep the commandments of God. And so Jesus says, look, I, I appreciate the fact that you don't like when, you know, people misinterpret my, my words, and, 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 but that's not enough. It's not enough. Because what I, need, what, what I need you to do, what I need for you to do is to turn back the clock. I need you to go back to how things used to be. Can we do that? Can we go back to the days when, 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 when you were just head? Hmm. When you were head over heels in love with me. Me. Jesus says, that's what I'm looking for. Now, understand that before we do that, before we can go back to how things used to be, I need you to do something. Because our relationship cannot get back to what it used to be without us bringing uh, uh, some, some kind of closure to what has happened over this last year. So the first thing I need you to do is I need you to repent and I need you to ask for forgiveness for how you have kicked me to the curb over this last year. I need you to ask for forgiveness. I need you to repent. And because I am a, I'm, a, I'm a loving God, a faithful God, because I say that in 1 John that, that he, if you confess your sins, I am faithful and just and to forgive you, for, forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you of all of our, your unrighteousness. Because I am that same God, I will forgive you. But the thing is, but, 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 but I first need you to realize how you have fallen, realize that you were wrong in trying to just, just you know, I mean... Push me aside. After you repent, I need you to get back to having a sincere desire for the things of God, for the things of the Lord. I need you to get back to not just, not just, not just wanting to fulfill a weekly quota. But I, I, I want you to get back to that time where, where you just loved being in my presence presence love being in my you, you know how you know how see 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 what in, in, in our carnal relationships when you when you uh 
you know, when you get married or, or when you when you get married or when you get a boyfriend or girlfriend and and, you know, you, you ain't got to do no talking. You just want to just be in folk presence, you know. So so, you you know, we ain't got the uh, my, my wife talks about how, you know, uh, we don't have to you know, we, we may both be sitting on the bed. I'm doing something. She's doing something. But she just want me to be there. Just just be there. So she comes home from work, you know, and 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 I come downstairs and and she may be cooking or I'm cooking or you know, and sometimes she'll go upstairs. Hello. But you know, sometimes you you just want, you know, just to be in your presence. Being your presence. So the Lord says, look, look, I just want I just want you to get back to the time where you just want to be in my presence. Remember when we were first getting to know each other and you'd come to my house every time I asked you to? Every time. Every time you got an opportunity to be where I was, you took advantage of that opportunity. I'm going to say that one more again. So if there was something going on on Zoom, and we were spending time with you, you were there. It was more than just the weekly quota, the Sabbath 1130 to one. It was more than that. See, I remember back in the day, I didn't have to beg you to come on. I didn't have to beg you to be in my presence. Mercy. I didn't have to beg you to be in my presence. Lord, have mercy. I remember back then that you used to tell me there was, there was nothing more important. There was nothing. Back then, see, this is back then. Back then you would tell me there was nothing more important to you than being in the presence of your first love. I, look, I... I just want to spend time with Jesus. I don't care about nothing else. See, that's how I was back in the day. On Sabbath, we used to spend the whole day together. Whole day together. See, 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 that's how I was back then. See, nowadays, nowadays, it's, it's like, you know, I mean, I, I'm, 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 there are all these other distractions, so I can't, I can't, I can't keep your attention no more. See, I, I'm lucky to get you for an hour and a half on Sabbath. But before and after, before 1130 and after one, oh, I can't get no time with you. I can't get no time with you. He says, look, I, I remember the times where I had to, you know, I had to, I had to literally, uh, 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 I had to cut the lights off, you know, for, for, for you to go home. I remember the times where, where, where I had to, you know, I, I had to have the pastor to say he got to go do something because you just wanted to stay with me all day. I remember those days, Jesus says. Now, 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 Jesus says, no, don't get me wrong. I, I, li listen, listen, don't get me wrong. I, I enjoy spending time with you by yourself. I enjoy that. But there's something about you coming together with some of my other folks, some of my other first loves, some of my other people. And, and what happens is when you come together with them and, and see what happens is, see, I, I, I know they didn't always treat you right. I know sometimes they got on your last nerve. And, and I know sometimes you you hated when they came on Zoom. I know, but but but, you know. The thing about it is. 
they were working on themselves and I was working on them. So, 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 so it may not, have, they, they may not have been the, the people that you wanted to be around or, or the people that, that you could call your friends, but, 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 but they were working on it. Besides, I've always wanted you to love them as much as I love them. Hmm. See, see, back in the day, uh, I, I used to say, by this will all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. If you have love one for another. See, that's, that's what I used to say back in the day. And so I need, I, I need you, I need you not to just think that you can just spend time with me, but I need you to, to spend time with me and my other friends. And say, I need for I need for somebody to get that because because some of us some of us some of us are watching it and we think that look I spend time with Jesus. I get my Bible studies in. But but listen to what the text says. What listen to what the text says. Listen to what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter ten, verse twenty three. Let us, excuse me, verse 24, and let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. In other words, let me think about somebody else in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting or encouraging one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. In other words, in other words, so, so that text is not just talking about you coming physically into the building. It's talking about any time the people of God are gathering, you should be there. And he says, he says, and so much the more as you see the day, the second coming approaching. So anytime God's people are meeting, God's people should be there. But look what he says in verse 26. For if we sin willfully, uh-oh, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries. In other words, what's the sin? If we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, what's the sin? He just told us in verse 24 and 25, not assembling together with the brothers and sisters. Mercy. So, 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 so the Bible is saying, mm, mm. see, when I don't come to church, According to the text, see, we don't read this. We always stop at verse 25. But 26 says, if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, the truth is you need to be in the presence of not just God, but like-minded believers. And so if we sin, see, it's not just coming into the physical building. You got there. Listen, listen, when you don't come together, when the opportunity presents itself, to, 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 to on Zoom or wherever it is, when you don't come together, you are missing out. Not just are you missing out, but somebody else is missing out on something that God has given you to give to them. Mercy. Listen, listen, listen. There are things that God has given you that are supposed to be a blessing to us to somebody else, and we can't receive that blessing if you ain't there. So, he says, look, I need you to not just spend time with me, but I need you to spend time with my friends, too. He says, I also need you to start <laughs> reading my letters like you used to. See, because what happens is I went through a whole lot of work. I spent a whole lot of time getting all of these people together to write all of these different letters to you. And the reason I did it is because I wanted you to have something tangible to help you to help you get to know me better. 
So, so, so if you want to know anything there is to know about me, anything, all you have to do is read the letters that I have written. And since I know everything there is to know about you, I need you, beloved. I need you to take time to get to know me. And believe me, beloved, there's a lot for you to know. See, when you were still in love, when I was still your first love, you used to read my letters every chance you got. In fact, you wouldn't even leave the house without making sure you had my letters by your side. See, see, but nowadays, <laughs> my letters stay home, but your phone stays by your side. Hello. See, back in the day, you would carry, you would carry my letters everywhere you went. See, see, you, you, you know the old school folk, the old school folk, when you, when you, when you see that car and they got that big old Bible in the, uh, in the window or in the front window, in the back window, Jesus, that, those are the kind of days I'm looking for. But he says, but what I've noticed is not only do you not carry my letters with you, but, but sometimes you don't even bring mercy. When you don't spend time, when, when, when you don't spend time in my letters, reading my word, when you don't spend time reading and learning about me, it tells me that you don't care about me. See, when my wife and I started to date, <clears throat> 2001, March 2001, we started to date. And we live in D.C. I'm in D.C. My wife is at Howard doing her master's. And when we started to date, every single, every day after work, every day after work, what I would do is I would leave work. I would go to my girlfriend's house at that time, my wife, I would go to her house. I get off at like four or five o'clock. I would go and I would spend the entire day with her and night. I would leave, we just talking now, for all y'all, we just talking. We would, we would spend hours upon hours talking talking two three o'clock in the morning talking I would leave her house go home take a nap get up go to work do the same thing again the next day because I wanted to know everything there is was to know about her and so God is saying, God is saying, God is saying, when you don't take, when you leave my letters at home, when you don't read them, when you think that, 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 that this movie on Netflix or, or Hulu, whatever it is, is more important, then you're telling me that you don't care to know me. So for me to get back to being your first love, you got to get back to seeing the importance of my letters because that's the only way you'll ever get to know who I am. And when you get to know me like you used to, you'll start telling other people about me like you used to. I remember in the beginning of our relationship, he says, you used to talk about me all the time. In fact, I remember you used to drive your friends crazy because all you talk about was how much you love being with me. And of course, they couldn't understand why somebody would want to spend Friday nights with me instead of watching a movie, going to the club, 
going out to eat. For those friends that didn't make sense, and, and it really got bad when, when they started to see how, how, how our relationship was beginning to change you. And so, and so no longer were you interested in, in, in the things that you used to be interested in. See, I remember when my wife and I began to date, and, 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 and before we started dating, I was, I was one of those young guys who used to club and, and drink and, and all that other stuff. And so when we began to date, all of a sudden, I remember we started to date, and, and my wife was raised in the church, raised at Venice, and, and, and me, I'm, I'm, I'm coming you know, I'm coming out of the world. I just got baptized into a first day church and, and I'm coming out of the world. And I remember our first date. Sister Green. I remember our first date and, and, and uh, we go to this place called B. Smith's. And because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I wasn't there yet. You know, we get there, we sit down, we order dinner and and I ordered a Long Island iced tea. Now, for those of you who ain't always been saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, hello, somebody. And so as I'm, as I'm with my wife and, 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 and I'm sitting there and, and, and it is just something about my wife that it was like I just couldn't. I was feeling uncomfortable. I don't know what it was drinking this drink. And I remember also uh, uh, at another time, me and my friends, we would go out and party. We'd go to the club. And, and I remember going to the club. And I remember feeling like I don't belong here. I remember feeling like I don't belong here. Hadn't been baptized into the Adventist church yet. But I'm having this relationship and this relationship is beginning to change me. God wants to have a relationship with you where you begin to get changed. He says, I remember when you first told your family about our date day, the Sabbath. I remember you telling them that I didn't mind you doing what you wanted to do on any other day. But on this day, on the Sabbath, I wanted us to spend all day together. I wanted that time to be set out for me and you. I didn't want to, there to be any distractions by the game or the job and all of these other things. And, and, and at first they thought, your friends thought that you were crazy because they couldn't see why I wanted us to spend a whole day together. But after you explained to them, even though they might not have agreed, they understood where you were coming from. And so Jesus said, I, I, I really hope that you can get back to telling people about me like you used to. Because when they hear about our relationship, when they hear about, about who I am to you and, and what you are to me, then, then they, won't, they won't have this perspective, this, this perception of me that, that others have made me out to be. When you tell them that, all, that I also want to be their first love, When you begin to show them my letters that I've also written to them, then they will get to that point where they realize that they also need me as their first love. Beloved, I'm not saying all this to say that, beloved, I'm saying all this to say that if you just repent and go back to doing the things you used to do, then our relationship can go back to where it used to be. Back when I was your first love. At this time, my first love is going to come 
and sing a song for us. There he was just waiting in our old familiar place, an empty spot beside him where once I used to wait to be filled with strength and wisdom for the battles of the day. I would have passed him by again, but I clearly heard him say, I miss my time with you, those moments together. I need to be with you each day, and it hurts me when you say, you're too busy, busy trying to serve me. But how can you serve me if when your spirit's empty? There's a longing in my heart, wanting more than just a part of you. It's true. I miss my time with you. Now what do I have to offer? And how can you truly care? My efforts have no meaning when your presence isn't there. But you'll provide the power if I take the time to pray. And I'll stay right here beside you and you'll never have to say I miss my time with you, those moments together. I need to be with you each day, and it hurts me when you say you're too busy, busy trying to serve me. But how can you serve me when your spirit's empty? There's a longing in my heart, wanting more than just a part of you. It's true. I miss my time. It's true. I miss my time with you. Jesus says he misses his time with you. He misses his time with you. Jesus wants nothing more to, than to spend time with his children. He doesn't need all of your time, but he does want you to make him a priority. He wants you to make him the center. My appeal today 
is for you to go back to that first love. It's for you to go back to that place where you first found Jesus. You see, oftentimes when we come into the church, we get baptized and we're on fire for the Lord. But, but over time, that fire, that passion, that zeal begins to wane. And God is saying, I need you to have that fire, that passion, that zeal again. Will you do it? Will you do it? Will you do it? I'm going to close with this. Sometimes we say, I want to do it but I don't know what to do. So I'm going to challenge you today. First of all, to pray. To ask the Lord to give you that first, that fire, that passion, that zeal to make him your first love again. And then take practical steps where, where you set your alarm clock. In the morning, if you get up at 6 to go to get prepared for work, set your alarm for 5. Set it for 5.30. In the evenings, set an alarm. And before the, the, the determined purpose in your heart that I'm going to spend time with Jesus before I put my head to bed. I'm going to cut the TV off. I'm going to cut off the computer. I'm going to get to that point where I realize that there's more to life than all this other stuff. Some man, woman, boy, or girl watching today, you may need a little assistance getting back to that first love. Some man, woman, boy, or girl. You may need to recommit your life to Jesus Christ through Bible studies, baptism, rebaptism. I'm going to ask for you to reach out to us at prayer at SouthMashvilleSDA.org. Prayer at SouthMashvilleSDA.org. It's no accident that God has allowed us to go through this pandemic. God is sifting out the wheat from the tares. Will you be a part of the wheat? Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much that in spite of the fact that we fall away from you, you've never fallen away from us. We thank you so much that we are still the apple of your eye. We thank you so much that you are still our, or better yet, we are still your first love. The only reason that we have an opportunity for eternal life is because we are your first love. You died for us because you love us that much. Help us to do the same and die for you. Father, we pray that you would be with those who are watching, viewing online. Father, we pray for the offering that will be collected today, Lord. Father, they will see the, the different ways to give on the screen. Father, we pray that you would bless that offering. That it may be used, not just here, but also around the world to further the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Father, we pray that your blessing will continue to be around upon us as we go throughout the rest of this Sabbath. Bring us back at the next appointed time. This is our prayer. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful Sabbath.